Dante, it's pronounced vase, not vase. You shut the fuck up. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're gonna talk about vases. And before we move on to vases and the different shapes of vases, where they come from, and how to do them, we need to get one misconception out of our minds as far as vases go. A real vase does not have to be the shape we see in museums and on TV and in magazines all the time that look like this. This is a common misconception. Technically speaking, this is a vase. This is also technically a vase. This is also technically a vase. And this, even though the hole at the top is extremely small, is also technically a vase. The reason I'm trying to drill this point into your head so much is because everyone seems to think that the vases they see on TV or in magazines or museums are this shape right here, and that this shape is the standard and defines what an actual vase is. And most people think that if they can't make something that looks exactly like this, or at least this shape, they haven't made a real vase. Darn TV and magazines ruining the kids' perception of beauty. And I especially want students who have this misconception in their minds to know this information because they seem to put blood and sweat and tears into to making this singular shape right here when really all they had to do was make a cylinder and trim it and that technically is considered a vase. Once you have that misconception out of your head, making a vase is so easy that this is actually a lidded piece that I lost the lid to. I don't have the lid anymore, but guess what? This is now a vase. So as we're going into the vase section of the channel, you need to get that misconception out of your head. Not every single thing that's Grecian and Fora shaped is a vase. And to tell you the truth, as long as it's a little bit large and it doesn't have a clear function to it, it can pretty much be a vase. You see this double hump bottle right here? It is now a vase. You see this lidded piece right here? Oh no, I lost the lid. <gasps> but guess what? Now it's a vase. The point of the entire vase section is honestly to teach you to make larger cylinders and straighter cylinders. We're going to be doing this section first because a cylinder is the easiest thing to make a vase out of. But don't think you're out of the woods just yet. The reason we're approaching this section with only cylinders is because it's now time for you guys to learn how to make taller cylinders and straighter cylinders. And today we're going to go over a little bit of the tips and tricks it actually takes to make that experience a little bit easier for you. And maybe even pass your class. <gasps> he knows I'm in school, oh my god. Before we get started, there are some basic guidelines to making a vase like this. Number one, it must be over six inches to be considered a vase. This is not a general rule for all potters, it's just for this section. The entire point of this section is to get you guys to make taller cylinders cylinders, i.e. vases. And that doesn't really help anybody if you simply make a tiny little cup and take the handle off and go, oh look teacher, I made a vase. You didn't make a vase, you made a cup with one less step. So for the first rule, it must be over six inches tall. For the second rule, you must be able to put at least one flower inside of it. That means you can make this hole as small as you want, even though technically it would make your job harder if you did. But you can make this hole as small as you want as long as you can put at least one little flower or something in there. This technically still counts as a vase. Rule number three, and this is only if you're making a round vase, you must choke the top or the mouth in smaller than the actual body of the cylinder or the vase itself. This one's a very specific rule because if I didn't say this, if you cut this part off and you made this part a lot larger than this part right here, you would pretty much just have a bowl. I mean seriously, think about it. If you just took this part off right here, this pretty much now looks like a tiny bowl. And you're gonna go ahead and try and call this a vase if I don't make this rule. So you can't be doing that! But we're really just laying down these rules for the benefit of first timers trying to make their vase for the first time. With all of that in mind, let's get started. Potter tip. Now before we even start to open up our centered clay here, it's a good idea to cone up and down multiple times. I want this clay body to be the same all throughout because I'm trying to make the straightest and tallest cylinder that I possibly can. And sometimes if everything's not nice and even, you get a little bit of discrepancy at the very top of your pool. To help the pulling process go a little bit more smoothly, I like to cone up and down multiple times. And sometimes I get a little bit of trouble when I cone up and down. 
You see, sometimes when I cone upwards, I get a little tiny hole, kind of like a volcano, at the very top of my center right here. Now, this actually happens to a lot of people. This is a fairly common thing. All this means is that you're putting a lot more pressure on the outside of your clay body than you are on the inside of your clay body. And that makes sense, because you haven't opened up yet. There's no reason you'd be touching the inside of your clay, because you physically can't. And most people end up just trying to push this down and center anyway. But here's a little tip just to get rid of this. Go ahead and center down like you normally would with your two thumbs in place, but this time put one of your thumbs on the inside of this clay right here and keep it inside as you push pressure diagonally this way with this part of your hand just like this you see that hole's gone and to avoid this problem a second time put a lot more pressure on the outside of your clay body the more pressure you put the more clay on the inside that's gonna move up as well and if it happens again just like this just repeat that process over and over again until this stops happening just push right down with your thumb in the middle, and sooner or later, it'll come right out. Just like this. Okay, we're just gonna open up now. Potter tip! If I decide to open up my cylinder and it's way out here, you best believe it's gonna look like a real awkward vase if the mouth of my piece is way over here and the bottom of it is way out here. You're essentially gonna have a very large flanged out piece at the bottom, and you don't really want that. So while you're opening up that center right there, make sure you don't go too far out here because you're gonna be making a straight cylinder, and the further you pull it out, the less clay you're gonna be able to pull upwards. So try and decide how big you want your bottom before you actually start pulling upwards. When you start to pull your very first cylinder vase, especially with new beginner throwers, you'll end up pulling your wall a little bit flanged outwards just like this. And this is not what we want. This is not a straight cylinder. So before you even attempt your second pull, I suggest you choke inwards. And choking is extremely simple. Especially if you're a beginner and you have a rather thick clay body, you can simply put two fingers on the inside, two fingers on the outside, and then place your thumbs right at the bottom down here and just push inwards just like this, all together. And when you get to the top, make sure you hold your fingers down here, just like this. And there you go, you've choked in your cylinder. Now when you're pulling a taller cylinder, sometimes some parts of the clay are a little bit weak, or you're putting a little bit too much pressure on the cylinder, and this is okay, this usually happens with beginners. But as a result of that, your clay body is going to twist somewhere. This is a sign that number one, you're either using too much water, or number two, you're overworking the clay body and putting too much pressure on certain parts. And there's a couple things you can do about this. Number one, you can learn to pull really hard at the bottom and slowly ease up on the pressure as you're pulling your cylinder, especially at the top. All the stuff down here is already formed, you're not going to pull that anymore. But if you put more pressure on the top, it's going to end up twisting the clay body. This clay body down here is already set, and you're essentially slowing down the clay body up here by putting a lot of pressure on it. This will cause a difference in pressure on the clay, and it'll start to twist just like this. Second thing that you can do is a little bit of a cheat code. Go ahead and get your wooden potter's knife, wet the inside of your cylinder real nice, and get the pointy part of your wooden knife and put it right up against the very bottom of your cylinder just like this. And remember to make it extremely straight. You don't want it like this and you don't want it like this. You want it as straight as it can be just like this. Put it at the very bottom just like this of your cylinder and push the clay body from the inside of your cylinder to the outside of this wooden knife right here. And remember to keep this hand extremely stable because this is what you're gonna be using to make your very straight line. You can most likely get one more pull out of a cylinder that you've done that trick with, but you do have to remember the part in which started to wiggle is still weak clay. So if you do decide to pull one more time, make sure to pull a little bit of pressure off on that one area. And that's pretty much it. It's kind of like throwing an extremely large cup, except for you're not going to put a handle on it, and it's going to be over six inches tall. Although you are pretty much done, I like to give my cylinders a little bit of extra flair, especially if I know they're just going to be used for a vase. One of the things I like to do with my cylinder vases is either make them super flat or super thick. And you can do this by getting your metal rib and just pushing it on the very, very top of your cylinder, just like this. This flatness up here doesn't really do anything function-wise, but it does make it look like it was made for something more than just being a cylinder. Now it looks like it was actually made to be a vase. The other thing that I really like to do is get the end of my metal rib, or even my wooden knife, any tool with a sharp edge, and make one singular big line right here. Boom. 
This line right here kind of gives it a defining characteristic. Now it looks like somebody actually put purpose and thought into separating the body from the very top of the cylinder. It looks a little bit better. It doesn't really add anything functionally, but it adds a little bit of flair. And the really neat thing that I find about vases is that you really don't have to cut off or trim this bottom skirt part off. You can leave it on and it'll still look like a vase. But if you want your cylinder to look a little bit more straight and thought out, you can technically cut it off and it'll look a little bit more delicate. You see, it's not the fact that you made a very tall cylinder for a vase, it's the fact that you put a little bit of thought and effort into making sure that you know that this is gonna have flowers in it and it's gonna go on somebody's desk and it's gonna look really nice. And these little accents here, like making a flat top, putting a line in it, or making it look a little bit more elegant by cutting off the skirt that doesn't flange out, really gives it that sense. And I highly suggest, once you get your cylinder, go ahead and play around with the form a little bit and see what you can do and what you like to do with your forms. I'm a fan of the swirly vases myself. Well thank you guys for joining us today. I'm really hoping that this video helps some people out with making their vases to pass their classes, especially for the first time. Because when I was making a vase, it was extremely hard for me, especially because I had that concept in my mind that each and every vase had to be this beautiful Grecian amphora vase that I see almost everywhere in social media. But even though this is technically just a cylinder with a swirl inside of it, this is still a vase. Well thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Week. I already know 100% there's gonna be somebody who's gonna comment down below. Oh, I didn't follow the rules that you told me, and I made something that looks like a vase. One more time, I made a vase that was bigger than the rules, and it kind of like a vase. Those rules are only for the context of this video and specifically for beginners. If you're over here making Grecian M4 vases, you're clearly not a beginner. Now go sit down, you attention-needing unfried chicken nugget.